Hi, I'm Robin Schneider and I'm going to show you how to create a plaid pattern in Photoshop. Let's start by opening a file that's 3 inches by 3 inches, 100 dpi. I filled it with a color and I'm going to create some stripes using the rectangular marquee tool. That's my warp layer. I need to create another layer. I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Edit, transform, rotate 90 degrees clockwise. This is now my fill layer. We need one more layer though. We need our weave pattern and we're going to have to create that. Open a new file, very tiny file. It's going to be 4 pixels by 4 pixels with a resolution of 100 and very important, the background contents must be transparent. We're going to zoom into this tiny little file. Make sure your colors are set to default. Grab your pencil, click in the upper left hand corner, right next to it, down, right, down, right, down. We're working on making a twill pattern. We need to make sure it is a seamless repeat, so we're going to hit the offset filter. Filter, other, offset. We're going to offset this by two pixels and two pixels, and I can see immediately that there's a hole here. I'm going to fill it in with a pixel, and we can define this as a pattern. Edit, define pattern. This is our twill weave. Click OK, and we can get rid of it. Don't need it anymore. So back to this file. We are going to fill this layer with our twill weave. So edit, fill, here's the weave, click OK. We don't need to see it though. We really only need it to make a selection. So I'm going to turn off the visibility and control click right here on the thumbnail in order to select the pattern. Click on the fill layer and delete it. Deselect my marching ants and there's my plaid. Let's define it as a pattern. Edit, define pattern. There you go. I am going to fill the page with my plaid pattern, but I'm going to do it through the layers panel. Click on the black and white cookie, one of my favorite icons. If you're a New Yorker, you know what I'm talking about. We're going to grab this yellow pattern, and in this window, I have the option of adjusting the scale. I'm going to do that. I'm going to change the scale, make it a little bigger than 100%. That looks pretty good. Click OK, and I'm going to now rotate it. So right click convert to smart object. And now I can rotate control T for transform. The reason I'm rotating it is because I want my fabric on the bias and the bias is 45 degrees. So I'm going to type in 45 degrees and click OK. And now I have my plaid on a 45 degree angle. I'm going to grab my rectangular marquee and create a little blanket shape here. That looks pretty good. And add a layer mask. There it is. Let's do the same thing we did by control clicking on the thumbnail to make a selection. We're going to put a, some edging stitching around our blanket. Now that I've got my selection, I'm going to go back up here to select, modify, contract, and I'm going to make my selection six pixels smaller so that it's just inside the border of the blanket. Make a new layer, and in this new layer, I'm going to stitch the blanket. So I'm going to click on the brush, and I've got a brush that I set up earlier, and I'll show you what I did. I took a round brush and I squished it to be kind of the size of a grain of rice, put it on a little bit of an angle, 300% spacing, and here we go. I'm going to pick a color, check my size, make the brush just a little bit smaller, left bracket smaller, right bracket larger. In a new layer, I'm going to go to my paths now, and I'm going to click on this icon on the bottom that allows me to turn a selection into a path. Once the selection is turned into a path, I can stroke path with brush. Now I'll release the path, go back to my layers, and let's add a little bit of layer effect to this. We're going to click on effects. Let's add a little bevel emboss to give it a little bit of depth. Uh, size is a little big, so I'm going to change it to three pixels, maybe even two pixels, and soften one pixel. Let's add a little drop shadow. Let's change the distance to two and the size to 2, that's a lot better, but it's still awfully dark. So let's change the black to a nice chocolate brown, lower the opacity just a little bit, and there we go. We've got our stitches. So now we've got the stitches, we've got the weave. There's one more thing we have to do, and that is change the texture of this fabric. Right now, what I have created is a cotton. And what I really want this to be is wool. So I'm going to go filter, noise, add noise, 
And if I set it to monochromatic Gaussian and add about 11%, I get this terrific texture that reads as wool instead of cotton. Now I want to warp it. So I'm going to select my stitches and my pattern, right click, convert to smart object. And this is going to allow me to go ahead and warp this piece of fabric. So to warp it, transform, control T or command T on a Mac. And I have a problem. See how big this area is? That's not really working for me. And the reason that happened, I'm going to undo, control Alt Z to undo again, is because of this layer mask here with the smart filter. I'm going to go ahead and drag it into the trash can. And now I'll select these again, right click, and convert to smart object. This time I should have better luck when I hit transform. So control T, much better. Right click, select warp. And now I can go ahead and warp this. So I think I'm going to pull this edge over a little bit. And we'll kind of move some of this around a little bit as if it's just falling off a clothesline or maybe dancing a little bit. There we go. I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to fill that layer with 50% gray. And there's an actual option here called 50% gray. Don't just guess at it because you'll have trouble. We want to change the layer blend mode to soft light, and we're going to clip this inside of my blanket. Now I can go ahead and shade with the dodge and burn tools, but I'm going to mask this off a little bit first. So I just drew a path with the pen tool, and I'm going to go into the path layer and turn the path into a selection. Back to my layers. We'll start with the burn tool, and I'm going to make my brush a little smaller and go ahead and shade this edge a bit and shade this bit, switch to the dodge tool, and again, make my brush smaller, and we'll give it a little highlight right along here where the fold is happening. Zoom out a little bit. Now I'm gonna swap my selection, select inverse, and now everything else is selected. Go back to my burn tool, and this time I'm gonna shade this area underneath where the blanket is sort of folded over itself. And I'm going to also make this bigger and shade a few other areas where it looks like my blanket might be in need of some shading. I'm going to switch to the dodge tool, make it bigger, and we'll add a few highlights here as well. Let's see, this looks like it's kind of up a little bit to me. Now that we've got that taken care of, we'll deselect. And I'm going to draw an area for my close-up and add a layer mask to the copy I just made. I'm going to release the link so they're not connected and transform, control T, the duplicate. I'm going to make it 250% larger than it started out. Check that. And I can go ahead and move this around to get a piece that I really like that shows off the plaid particularly well. And now I'm going to link it back together with the layer mask that I created. I'm going to add a stroke here just to make this a little more uh, defined. It's fashion and fashion changes. And as Heidi Klum says, one day you're in and the next day you're out, right? Well, unfortunately, we are out, as in out of this particular fabric and have to come up with something else, which is unfortunate because I just did all of this hard work, but I was smart. I did it with smart objects. So all I need to do is double click and double click and keep working my way back through these smart objects until I get to the first one where I loaded my fabric, which is right here. I can switch to the other fabric that we now have in stock. Click OK. Close the file. Click Yes. Close this file. Yes to the changes again. Close the next file. Yes to the changes again. And watch what happens. Not only did I swap out the fabric, but it changed the fabric in my blow up. It kept the texture for the wool. It kept the stitching, the warping, everything I added. It's all here, ready to go, because I use smart objects. So now you know how to make plaid, how to use smart objects, and make changes on the fly. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.